Hi everyone, I wasn't planning on posting this video for a while, but I think some of you are quite keen to get started on interview prep, so I just want to share some general advice as to what you could be doing right now. I'll be linking any resources I mention in the description box for you as well. And this is also not subject specific advice. I'm hoping to get that up for you guys soon, but if you do have any subject requests that you think might not be included, please do leave me a message. Now, Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, and then medicine students, these are all the different groups that interview. I am going to leave medicine out of today's video. I think that should be talked about by one of the doctors. Um, the difference between Imperial and Oxbridge just generally for interviews is that with Imperial, if you get through to the interview stage, you're sort of already more than halfway there. So what I mean is you've got a better chance of getting in than not getting in. Now I do, don't trust this 100%. It's based on what I've observed from my own students, which is a fair few, and then from the internet and looking at different statistics and resources. But certainly of the students that I've worked with, if you've got an interview, it's a very good sign. Less so for Oxbridge, especially Cambridge who tend to call quite a few to interview but it's also a good thing in that you've still got a chance to get into this university if that is what you are aiming for. So Oxbridge, Oxford and Cambridge is known for their tutorial system and the interview itself is formed like a mini tutorial and there's plenty of information about this already on the internet. I just want to give my own thoughts on this and how it, you could maybe prep as a result of it. Now the tutors who are interviewing you they are going to be your actual tutors, the ones who will be spending several weeks out of a year with you. So they're trying to confirm two things really, um, aside from other skills of course, is that whether you will enjoy the style of learning and then also with that you will be able to contribute to that tutorial. Tutorials aren't always one or two students, it could be more, so maybe they're looking for people who can speak up more depending on what cohort they're taking in. It really could be anything and that's not something you can predict, that's all your tutors and your college's choice really. Now a tutorial is not structured as question, answer, question, answer, it's not an interrogation, so you shouldn't think of an interview as doing that either. So the more normal structure of a tutorial might be that your tutor's given you a problem set beforehand, you'd have then solved it, maybe handed it into their pigeonhole and then you would in your tutorial then take it in turns maybe walking through some of the problems and your tutors might be suggesting extended parts to solve within the tutorial stuff that you haven't necessarily prepped but is based on the work that you've done for an essay based class you might again you would have handed an essay in beforehand uh, on a certain topic and then you just spend the tutorial discussing that particular question um, and each of you might bring up points from your essay, your tutor might ask you to uh, defend a certain point you made in your essay, things of that nature. So I think a couple of things to take away, but first thing being is that for these tutorials, you are not really showing up to be tested. You're not guessing and walking in and it's not an intelligence test. You're supposed to be very, very prepared. And so it's the same for interviews. It is that you should be very, very prepared. This is also true for Imperial, but I think being a STEM focused school, they just overall are a lot more intense than other universities offering the whole spectrum of subjects once you get into the university. So a lot of students don't actually make it through all the years because of the intensity of the program. And if you look at the interview style and questions, they do seem to focus a bit more on um, getting you to solve kind of more defined questions. So they might give you some math problems, some graphs to draw, data to analyze. Again, all of this will be true for the Oxbridge interviews as well for a similar subject, but there's a little bit less about the personal statement and it's also a little bit shorter. Uh, so that's some general overview information. Now to get into the important part of how to prepare right now. Now, if you look at the information available to you from the official websites and things, they're looking for a few different skills. So the first one being showing passion and enthusiasm for your subject. Uh, the best way to show this is obviously through your readings and knowledge of what's going on around you. This is a very important type of preparation, um, especially because interview questions are going to be based off more recent events. Um, some colleges and some interviews and some subjects, they will give you articles to read, to analyze, and then give your thoughts on. So it's if you've obviously read quite a lot more and you know what's going on, this is going to go better for you than if you're looking at something fresh. So I'd say the only point here, aside from focusing on your degree specific event and news, try to not limit yourself just to your degree papers. Maybe you could be a bit more varied in your reading because there's always a lot of overlap between academic disciplines, especially at the undergraduate level. So I think if you could just be as well read as possible and when you are doing your reading, just to be very considerate and think about what conclusions you would draw and how you would talk about it is very important. 
They also want you to be ready to study at a high level. And for me, that means two things. One is that you should know, I would say, all of the A2 content of your chosen subject. So if you're taking four or five A levels, maybe you don't need to know everything to the end of the curriculum. But if you applied for mathematics, then you would be expected to know all of further mathematics up to A2. I think after that, to show levels beyond that would be to consider questions that are commonly asked in your field of interest. Uh, what would your answer be to those particular questions? What would your thoughts be on that? What kind of evidence or research would you be able to bring up to, to back up an opinion that you hold? Um, in terms of finding these sorts of questions, a lot of it naturally will arise through you reading your current affairs and they'll be commonly talked about topics and areas of interest. Maybe that would be um, AI, maybe it would be fintech, maybe it would be new things um, to do with uh, technologies in medicine there's all sorts of questions that are constantly being asked so hopefully some of it will naturally arise it's more down to you practicing how you would kind of uh, pose and uh, defend an answer or an opinion that you have surrounding that particular topic is very good practice to do um, obviously in order to practice that you really do want to uh, get into the habit of either filming yourself answering a question just so that you can re-watch it and see if you're waffling, if you're not making any sense, if you're going off topic, if you're being vague, if you're not defining things carefully and properly, if you're making too obvious a statement, too general a statement, you know, the, the classic and obvious mistakes that you'd expect to see someone make in a debate or in a piece of written work as well. Uh, beyond that, you could definitely ask your kind of friends and people around you to have a listen. I think if you uh, join the Discord, maybe you could talk to some of the other people. It doesn't even have to necessarily be your subject, to be honest. At this point, it's going to be a lot of similar skills that they're expecting from closely related subjects, um, just because you're not expected to have undergraduate level knowledge and they're certainly not going to be testing you on A-level stuff. So because of that, you can definitely afford to test each other, even if you're not taking precisely the same subject. Now, there's two more points that I want to talk about. So the first uh, is the personal statement and the written work. If you've written some sort of a long essay or a pre-assessment sort of essay and you've handed it in, um, maybe you've written something for a competition. I'm talking about extended pieces of writing, not a sort of TSA section two style piece of writing. Then it would just do you some, it would be useful for you to just go through it again. And again, practice talking about it out loud. So you want to talk about maybe the steps of how you reached your particular conclusion, what evidence you found, any conflicting views that you found, what you would do to extend your research in the future. Again, just the classic things that you would want to be able to defend and know a bit about. If you've read any books and included that in your parcel statement, I would definitely review that also um, and just keep detailed notes on it. It's all right not to mention or remember every single fact and figure that came up in the book, but it, you obviously you need to have a good general understanding of what you've read. The final point I want to make is this problem solving. So particularly for STEM and uh, other subjects that use um, a lot of mathematics on the degree, then I think practice walking through problems. So you could use, I think, Math Olympiad papers, step papers, map papers, anything where you're just sort of talking about it out loud, going about solving it. Again, do that filming or get someone to listen to you. Just see if there's a clear order and it's making sense. So just to sum up, I will leave some resources for where you could maybe find some of these questions and readings in the description box. But if I had to spend roughly, I'd say for now, five hours a day prepping, then I would probably choose to spend about two of them on some A2 revision and just making my core skills uh, are really good. I would then spend an hour making notes on current affairs and other developments. I'd spend an hour working through problem sets out loud or giving my opinions on a discussion topic if I'm humanities. And then I'd spend another hour exploring podcasts, other skills, looking at uh, Coursera EDX uh, subject videos. Um, and then I would spend any remaining time after that reading a book uh, surrounding my subject, basically. And I think that would be okay for now. And you can ramp it up as you go along. For now, I don't think you have to be solving the specific subject questions that come up for you um, if you Google the questions. I think it's a little bit too early and you'd be better off practicing some skills-based interview prep uh, for now. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Please leave any questions you have. As I said, I'm gonna try and get those subject specific questions and videos out for you very, very soon. Um, good luck and uh, don't worry too much if you haven't heard back from anywhere. I wouldn't expect to hear back from anywhere for at least a couple weeks. So all good. <laughs>